all and welcome to this video where we'll be looking at the extraction of metals. Now this topic doesn't really have as much chemistry theory as the others. It's more or less remembering some equations, being able to apply economical theory and some environmental stuff as well. We'll make a start on where we actually get the metals from. Now the metals typically exist in their oxide ores. You can get them in their sulfide ores as well. So. So you will have seen this because if you leave iron out on a bridge long enough, things like that, then it begins to rust. It exists as an oxide or the oxygen attacks it. So these are commonly abundant in nature. So this is where you'll get them from. Now the oxide ores are the ones we typically extract them from. So if you've got a sulfide ore, then what we can do is just burn it. So this process is called roasting, so not Premiership footballer style, just actually burning it in oxygen and you get the, the metal oxide and sulphur dioxide given out. Obviously straight away environmental problem with this, you're releasing sulphur dioxide, if it gets into the atmosphere, reacts with oxygen and water, forms sulphuric acid, acid rain, burns stuff. Now once you've got your actual metal oxides then you need to decide what reducing agent you're going to use to actually extract the metal from it. So everything you use to react with this will be a reducing agent because the metal, if we look, since the oxygen is more electronegative the metal is going to have a positive oxidation number, i.e. a positive charge. So we need to give it electrons to turn it back into its element state. Hence everything which reacts with it will be a reducing agent. So we've got some choices to make at the start. So your reducing agent will typically be one of these. So cork, carbon, very standard one because it's nice and cheap. So it's easy to get a hold of lots of it. Dirt cheap, chuck it in by the bucket load. So if you want to cut costs, typically that. Problem with it though is you get the carbides which screw up the, the purity of your metal. Hydrogen, very good, again nice and cheap. So in the atmosphere we can get it from water problem with it though tends to explode. You can use a more reactive metal so a more reactive metal will tear the oxygen from the less reactive metal. Electrolysis if you've got a highly reactive metal so if you've got sort of the aluminiums, the sodiums, the magnesiums, things like that then you can actually just pass an electrical current through it and it will split it up into the, the metal and oxygen. So we'll go through some of the processes where you'll actually see these. So initial one, common favourite, blast furnace. So in this, for the blast furnace, we obviously need heat. Where to get this heat from? We just use some oxygen, react it with carbon, you get carbon dioxide. Nice exothermic reaction, dirt cheap, in air, plentifully available, gives us heat, low cost. So lots of heat source. Now for the reducing agent, you can either have carbon or when carbon dioxide reacts with carbon, you get carbon monoxide. So either of these can act as your reducing agent. So either will give electrons to the actual metal. So the common favourite for the blast furnace is iron oxide. 
and it will turn it into the metal and the carbon monoxide will tear the oxygens from the metal oxide and give carbon dioxide. So now it's just a case of balancing it, so two ions, two across here and the three oxygens, so we need three of these to tear them all off since they're turned into CO2. So there we have the equation for the reduction of the metal oxide ion in the blast furnace. So it provides the heat, reducing agent. What you will usually see added in there as well is calcium carbonate. Now the calcium carbonate is there to react with any impurities, sort of silicon dioxide, that's the normal impurity what you'll see. Now calcium carbonate, it decomposes in the actual heat source. We get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now it is this which actually removes your impurity. So there, the calcium oxide removes the silicon dioxide and gives you the actual compound which comes off as slag. So there's plenty of stuff it can react with, it all comes off as at the bottom. Problems with this, obviously notice what we are producing here, carbon dioxide, greenhouse gas, carbon monoxide could also escape, again greenhouse gas also gives you a toxic atmosphere, so environmental problems need to try and stop these getting out. <coughs> What I was saying before about your choice of reducing agent and that you could use a metal, we could have used aluminium, which is more reactive than iron, to tear the actual oxygens off the iron oxide. Problem with that is, though, is as we'll see, it's really expensive to actually get aluminium. So you don't want to use an expensive metal to create a cheap metal. If your brain thinks like that, good luck. You're going to be a hobo soon. Carbon, nice and cheap. So the blast furnace... The other common ones, so we'll look at hydrogen next. So we need a heat source for this to occur, so similar, just burn stuff around it, get the actual heat. And the hydrogen acts as a reducing agent, tears the oxygen off. The reason you cannot use carbon for this one is you form a carbide. So the carbon will actually join to the metal. So if you see exam questions, you're a bit puzzled if it asks, why can you not use carbon? The answer is either A, carbon is less reactive than the metal, hence it will not be able to pull it off, or the favourite answer, which will be probably 99% of them, is it will form a carbide. Make sure to get your spelling right. Do not say carbonate. It is a carbide. The carbon just sticks to the actual metal. So nice and easy to do. Hydrogen's cheap, readily available atmosphere. As we've said, easy choice of reducing agent, but tends to explode, so last resort. Obviously the product, what you're making with that, that's a nice clean reaction because you'll notice the only thing we were producing up there was water. Water is not particularly going to cause an environmental problem. Um, other ones, so we've got electrolysis. I'll draw a very simple diagram of that. I'm going to leave out all the wires, um, fume hoods, etc. Okay, so in the electrolysis we've got a cathode which has the negative charge and we've got an anode which has a positive charge. 
So this is just a carbon rod. So your actual electrodes just made of carbon. Now in here we would have molten aluminium oxide. So we'll look at aluminium, it's a favourite, but you can do the electrolysis, as I said, with say magnesium oxide, sodium oxide, etc. Okay, so we've got some positive aluminium ions and some negative oxygen ions. Now, notice it has to be molten. In an ionic compound, do they conduct when they are solid? No, everything's held in a rigid lattice. So we need to actually provide a big enough electrical current to, to melt it, to turn it into the molten state. So things, the, the actual ions flow freely so they can actually move to either the anode or the cathode. Now in order to meld it, it's got a very high boiling point, costs lots of money. One of the ways we can reduce that cost if you want to remember the formula, I would just say remember the name. Add cryolite. It's just an impurity what you add to the aluminium oxide so it lowers the actual melting point hence makes it cheaper to actually melt it. So in here, your negative ion is obviously going to move to the positive electrode. Whereas your positive ion is going to move to the negative electrode. So one thing I said to help you remember, red cat. Reduction takes place at the cathode. So reduction, the gain of electrons, takes place at the cathode. So the aluminium being positively charged wants to gain electrons, hence will move there. So the half equations for that So the aluminium, each one's going to gain three electrons. If you want, since we've got the two there, you could have had two aluminium, three plus, plus six electrons, goes to two aluminiums. Doesn't really matter too much. <clears throat> and likewise, you could have had the, the three or two minuses going to one and a half or two. But there's your actual half equations. So you'll notice that aluminium is being reduced, it is gaining electrons, the oxygen is oxidizing, it is losing electrons. So it is acting as a reducing agent, forcing the aluminium, sorry, the, the electrodes are acting as the, the reducing agents, forcing the aluminium to take electrons. <clears throat> now, problem with this is, as I said, those are carbon. environmental problem with that. So the main costs for this reaction, one you have to supply a lot of electricity, two you're going to have to keep replacing these because the oxygen is going to burn them and they're going to dissolve off. Okay, your other one, titanium. Now for this we are going to use an actual stronger, well a more reactive metal to react with the chloride of it. So we need to convert to the chloride first. So we've got the titanium chloride and calm dioxide which forms. So again, environmental problem, greenhouse gas. 
Now when we've got our titanium chloride, any more reactive metal, sodium, magnesium, they're the favourites. Just be careful if you use magnesium, obviously you're going to get MgCl2 rather than NaCl, which we'll get here. Now this must be done in an argon atmosphere and at high temperatures. Now why the argon atmosphere is needed, titanium, it would just react with any oxygen you had around or any nitrogen as well. So similar to iron rusting, the titanium would do the same. Granted, not as quick, it would usually be the sodium which would do it really quick. So sodium is an actual high cost in this. It's an expensive metal. You don't want your expensive metal to rust. Well, before you've actually got a use out of it. Anyways. So that is pretty much it for the extraction of metals. The other main thing just to talk about on top of this, just recycling. So why we recycle, keep costs down. The main one which we recycle is the aluminium. So you saw how expensive it was. We've got to perform electrolysis. It costs about 5% of the energy required to melt the aluminium and just turn it into whatever else you want rather than having to pay all of it to actually perform the electrolysis and get new aluminium. Hence recycling, nice and cheap. And also cuts down on the actual environmental problems because if you just melt aluminium and turn it into a different aluminium shape, you don't have your carbon dioxide being given off by the anodes being burnt. And that is it for the extraction of metals.